we're taking a look at this planter here that we designed with pollinator power in mind with our design and planting process. So we want to look at what we did here is we kept in mind some different flower shapes for the pollinators and host plants. So by planting this container with the full life cycle of pollinators in mind, we're completing their life cycle right within this container. So we have this wonderful little flower here, this Cosmos Xanthos. We've got a very single open-faced flower that allows for the pollinators to land and go after the sweet nectar. And as they're landing, they're getting all that wonderful pollen attached to themselves. So they're going to go from flower to flower and cross-pollinate these flowers. And things like bees and wasps, bumblebees, uh, and native bees really love these single open-faced flowers. We have here an agastache that has a really nice tubular flower. So this is going to be for another type of pollinator, such as hummingbirds. They'll come in and they love these tubular shaped flowers to hover at and to get the nectar at. And again, as they do that, the pollen is attaching to themselves and they're going from flower to flower pollinating. We also have this wonderful little foliage plant down here, Helichrysum limelight which is actually the host plant to, to the uh, painted lady butterfly. So they will actually lay their eggs on this helichrysum. So we've got the pollinators, and then we have the host plants all within this container. We've got some wonderful broad foliage as well of the cardoons and the altanothera to provide protection in case there is a rain event or for nighttime. Sometimes they'll hide under these leaves if inclement weather comes in. We also have this little zinnia right here. This is a profusion zinnia. Again, a double but yet open-faced flower that you can see all the little areas for the pollinators to land on and get the nectar and then attach all that pollen to and cross-pollinate. So this container combines basically a whole little habitat for certain butterflies. Um, the best way to continue these to promote the blossoms is to always make sure that you deadhead your flowers. When the flower passes, you'll just come in and snip off right down to the first branch take off the spent flower like this, and then you will promote the next set of flowers to come and bloom. And that's gonna keep your container continuously blooming. Okay, we have another container combination here that's geared towards pollinators. We've got lots of different flower structures in this container. Um, we have got this wonderful salvia, black and blue salvia, that has a really great color for attracting pollinators as well as flower shape so it's a very tubular type flower little bees and hummingbirds really love this type of flower we've got this other agastache down here again tubular shaped flower and we even have a basil in bloom here with a slightly purple leaf and a wonderful sweet flower and these will attract all different types of pollinators to come get the nectar, and then get covered in this pollen and transfer them from flower to flower to aid in pollination. We have a fun plant up here that is an annual Asclepius. It is an annual milkweed. It's coming into flower at this point and then has wonderful, fun, interesting green balloon-like seed pods. But because this is in the milkweed family, this is the wonderful host plant to the monarch butterfly that we need to help along so much these days. So the, milk, the monarch will actually come here, it will feed on the flowers, and then it will deposit and lay its eggs on the underside of the leaves, and we will then have the complete life cycle of the monarch butterfly happening right here in this container garden, right in your backyard. The eggs will then hatch. You'll have the little larvae crawling around. They will eat the leaves a little bit, feed on the milkweed leaves, 
and then they will form a chrysalis and then you will have the adult butterfly. So the whole cycle can happen right here in this container. So for keeping and promoting the health of this container so that you can continue to promote for all the pollinators is always to remember to deadhead your flowers um, as stems, as in this salvia here, the stem has completely flowered out. We would come in and just prune this down, do a little pinch back and discard the past bloomed stem and then it will promote more stems of flowers to come. The same with the basil and the agastache.